The next step in our workflow is going to be dodging and burning. And instead of using these dodging and burning tools here, we're just going to be able to do this with a paintbrush. To begin, Alt-click the new layer icon, and I'll even name the layer Dodge and Burn. I'm going to set the blending mode to Overlay. Now I've seen people use Soft Light. Overlay is a little bit more pure in my opinion with the results, but it's, it's kind of strong. So you can, you can overdo it if you're not careful. You're going to fill the layer with 50% gray. And so it should look like that. There you go, it's overlay, and there's our layer. Now it's okay that it, this is a little heavy-handed if you're not careful, because we are going to back up on the opacity. So to begin, just grab a paintbrush, hit D on your keyboard, and keep the opacity set all the way, and I'm going to turn the flow rate down to 3%. Some common uses for dodging and burning are to accentuate highlights in the hair. So let's start that. You want to dodge any of the highlights, just hit X to switch the colors between black and white, so when we're painting with white, we're dodging. Let's just accentuate a few of these swirls here. Then you hit X on the keyboard and hit some of the adjacent areas. There'll be much more punch if your dodging and burning areas are sitting next to each other because the two play off each other. You use them both together to achieve the effect to get that contrast. Next time you're at the grocery store, check out in the hair coloring department all those boxes and you'll see if you look close that it's definitely been dodged and burned. I think most people don't catch it, but have a look next time you're in the grocery store. Okay, you can see the before and after, so I'll, I'll keep it like that. Another common use for dodging and burning is to accentuate around the eyes. Now, I'll do one first and then pause it and finish the other one to save time. What you want to do is burn around the, the pupil, make it kind of dark, and you can also burn the outer edge of the iris. That's where that kind of color is anyway. You can burn any areas around uh, like eyeliner, eyelashes for a portrait. Of course, she doesn't, this one here doesn't have eyelashes. Anywhere where you want to accentuate the, the form or give them the glamour treatment, you know, the eyeliner look, hit it with the dodging and burning. And then you can well, you can dodge any highlights, but then this U-shaped area right here in the, the iris, you can dodge. So you can burn the pupil a little bit in the, around the outer edge of the iris, and then this little area right here on the iris, dodge it a little bit. I'll pause it and do the other one. Okay, here's the two done now. You can also lighten the eyes fairly easy without too much to do just by getting a little bigger paintbrush and then dodging just a little bit around this part of the eye. Normally the top part of the eye is under shadow from the eyelid so you don't want to lighten that up but if I just give this a little the whole thing a little one little quick pass like this it lightens the eyes up. So there's the before and the after. You can see it now. Another nice way to view this is just to hide your other layers so that you see the 50% gray and you can see exactly what you've done then. Like that. When you're in the mode of dodging and burning, you can just have a look all over your image in any areas you'd like to kind of push the contrast for whatever reasons, now's the time to do it. For instance, this dog here is kind of sitting in front of the one in the back and there's a little She's lighter and he's darker, so if I want to bring that, push that contrast between the two dogs, I could push in what's normally there. So let me dodge or burn him right some of this area where he is. And then right here where she is behind, I'll, I'll dodge it a little bit. And you can see how just a, a simple thing like that can have a good effect. I like to dodge and burn because it's probably the most artistic part of any anything you'll do uh, in retouching especially if you have a graphics tablet and it's fun because you get to impose your own will on the image instead of only being able to enhance what's already there you can 
you get to be a painter in essence. Now an advanced variation of this technique I'm going to show you next because you'll find that certain areas when you're you'll overdo. You get carried away because you like it at the time while you're doing it and you know we're zoomed in like this and everything's looking cool and then in retrospect it's like whoa that's that's too strong right here. So I can drop the opacity of this layer and I can just bring in the amount I want. But the problem a lot of times will be certain areas will be a little too strong and other areas you've dodged and burned just right and you don't want to dial down the opacity of the areas that are that weren't overdone. So what you can do is simply add a mask to this layer. Like let's say I like the way the hair's done here but I've decided that the eyes are just a little too overdone. No problem. On my mask, just mist in a little gray here or a little black back on onto the mask layer like this. And if I look at my mask, you can see what I've done here. So let's zoom in. There's without the mask and there's with the mask. But it's still a lot lot stronger than with nothing at all as you can see. So you can use the mask here, let's zoom out, to just adjust the strength of this effect. And the nice part about that is knowing that you have an out, an easy way to change your mind, is that you won't hold back when you're dodging and burning. Just have a good time. Look all over your image and any, any parts you want to push the contrast. I'm going to pause the tape and just hit it a little bit everywhere and then we'll have a quick look. Okay, I've dodged and burned a little throughout and you can see the before and after by looking at the 50% gray layer and you can see over here where the mask I used it to hide some of the parts that I, I considered overdone and so there's the before and the after. If you move the layer around see how that dodging and burning the effect if it's not in alignment so you want to make sure you lock the position of that layer. If you go to my site www.cbrush.com you'll see on the models I've got these examples of quite a bit of dodging and burning. Next in the workflow we finish all the color adjusting using curves, levels, and hue and saturation. So check out the next videos.